one way of understanding Huatico, it's actually um, this, you know, wrong identification with who we imagine we are. It's it's this misidentification with you know who we think we are, and um, the thing which is interesting is that if we then think that the world objectively exists, we then created ourselves as a subject to that world. So the two processes, the objective world and the subjective ego, reciprocally co-arise. Those aren't like two separate processes. And, and, and then, of course, by the power of dreaming, as soon as we like identify with that or imagine that, then the whole dreamlike universe just will reflect back giving us all the evidence of the truth of that, and then we identify with a reference point, the ego. Mm. And that's me disease. That's not who we are. And so to see through that process, and it's something, you know, the idea of in Buddhism you do practice because it's such a strong habitual pattern, they say, for like numbers of lifetimes that our species has cultivated. When you see through it, you really more and more cultivate that muscle of, of just more and more seeing through it to the point where it becomes a new, in a sense, habitual pattern to identify with who you actually are, which is the spaciousness, which is the context in which all the content arises. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then you discover, oh yeah, the real um, source of evil, of Watiko is our own clinging, is our own grasping onto that identification, thinking that we exist as a separate self. And that self-contraction then over all the dimensions of our being will elaborate itself into suffering and evil. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you see, this is what I'm describing, this is the, the inside of the Buddha, who you can think of as a physician who found the cure for disease, the disease of suffering of, you know, the, the suffering that's like unnecessary suffering, that's unproductive suffering. And when you actually see through that and you realize, oh, this self-contraction, this clinging, this is something I'm doing moment by moment. I'm actually complicit in. And you realize, oh, how do I stop? Oh, I don't have to do anything to stop. I just have to stop doing something. I just mm-hmm. have to in a sense, stop clinging at something that I can't ever grasp. And and then you realize, oh, I can just, who I am, who we all are, is this light. I can just let my light shine. I don't have to actually, Mm -hmm. like, obscure it. And when, as more and more of us do this, and this is what the Watiko Psychic Epidemic is actually, from the dreaming point of view, and I go into this in my book, this is what the whole um, collective psychosis is actually. It's um, this revelation. It's revealing. What he goes is a revelation. And this is what it's revealing to us. And as more and more see this and connect with each other and really support each other in deepening our realization, we can literally change the dream. Like I've been saying, that's what this is all about. That's whatever. That's this whole thing is we then consciously, creatively participate in our own evolution. Mm. And um, if we don't um, step up, we're just going to continue to destroy ourselves. And, you know, I'm not overly interested in seeing how that's going to turn out. 